So it's that time again. It's the last Friday of the month, and we're having our, our uh, Planetarians web seminar. Uh, this one actually is going to be different. It's not going to be the standard format of a presentation and then followed by question and answers. This is going to be a real workshop, and uh, I will lead it. Um, but we will have everybody here participating in it. Um, so I will just, uh, I think I'll just go ahead and, and launch into it. I do have some slides that we're going to use. Uh, so let me switch over. Let me first of all share my screen so that uh, I can explain what it is we're going to be doing. I may have to unshare and share a few times in order to be able to see my notes, but we'll or I may have to flip out of my PowerPoint occasionally, um, but I'll start out in the PowerPoint. Um, let's see. We'll do move this thing out of the way. Get my desktop arranged here. Okay, are people seeing uh, a uh, screen of that says Planetarium Educators Workshop? Yep. Okay. Oh, I'm not. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Here we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, Carl, I think you have, I think you have a slow connection because occasionally your sound is getting uh, uh, in oh, garbled. No. Yeah, I'm getting a little, okay. Well, yeah. if I suddenly disappear. Uh, you, you can come back. Don't worry about me. Yeah, you'll disappear okay. and come back as needed. Uh, yeah, anyway, so we're, I'll turn off my video. That might uh, save some, some uh, space here. That's a good idea. Try that. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, now let's see. How do I change slides though? This is not changing for me. Uh, well, that I didn't check on. Uh, Andy came in, Andy Creech. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is kind of strange. I didn't test this out uh, ahead of time with uh, changing slides. <laughs> Very odd. And I think it's, oh, there it, oh, there there it, it did. Yeah. Okay, now what did I do to get it to change slides? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Okay, this is, so this workshop is based on something that was developed in the 1980s. Okay, it's, and it's the Planetarium Educators Workshop Guide, which is um, actually an IPS publication. International Planetarium Society publication by Alan Friedman. And you can see the authors down there, uh, including some other names you might recognize, Dennis Schatz, Kerry Snyder. Um, uh, but uh, that's just the history of it. And uh, it was based on, there was nothing, nothing by way of digital uh, or um, internet. There was no internet when this was created. So this workshop is an experiment to see how we can, uh, you know, we'll be doing an online version of this. So, um, so uh, what we're going to do is module, uh, there's like, we're going to just start in on the first module. And now I have to find out how, how that uh, changing of slides works. Oh, there we go. Okay. I still, I still have my copy too, Alan. You have your original, yeah. Right. Those are well. That's that's worth a lot now. <laughs> item. Not, that, not that you'll ever sell it. Okay, but we start out. Now this is actually going to turn into a series of workshops. Uh, this is just the first one, and uh, it originally took uh, a three days. Actually, it was a three day workshop. Um, but we're just going to do the first one today. The first, not the first day, but the first uh, module. And we start off with a game to uh, explore different levels of uh, interactions between the uh, a teacher and a student, okay? Uh, this applies both in planetarium and in classrooms. Uh, so this is sort of a general education technique. So some of you may have played something like this before, but it's uh, not, this has never been done in an online setting, as far as I know. In, in this particular format. So this, we're, we're doing this, we're, uh, we're doing an experiment or breaking ground or whatever you want to call it. Um, 
So the goal of the game is we're going to have a teacher. One of us is going to be the teacher, and it's not going to be me. We're going to have somebody volunteer. Um, and uh, if there's no volunteer, I will assign somebody. <laughs> uh, and then there are going to be the rest of us are going to be students. Okay, but the teacher is going to be given a list of words to teach uh, to the students. Okay, and I figure we're just going to start out with three words. Okay, and the students then, once they've learned those words, they have to prove that they learn it by typing words in the uh, chat window. Okay, so do you all, I, I want to check you, make sure you all have access to your chat. Okay, so let's, um, well now, wait, well, let's, before we do that, you're going to need to have a text editor or a word processor to flip out to and sort of to create drafts of things that you can then copy and paste in the chat. That's, you don't have to do that, but I find that that's a good technique to use for, um, so that you don't accidentally hit the return button and send your, your draft out to everybody. Um, so that's the general format of the game that we're going to do. Okay, and actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna exit. Let me escape this for a second and uh, so that I can see the chat. And if, if everybody could put your name in the chat, actually, just as a test to make sure your chat thing is working. Okay. And make sure it's sending to everyone. I'm trying to remember how to get to the chat on, um, on an iPad. On the iPad? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm trying to figure out how to get the chat with my screen share on. Okay. I'm on an iPad too, and I can't figure it out. All can't right. see the chat. Oh, oh, Andy, I think I got it. I think if you go up to the participants, like if you tap along the top and then click on the bubble that says participants, and there's something down there that says chat. Mine is at the bottom of the screen. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> yeah, normally, yeah, on a computer, hmm. it's at the bottom of the screen. Oh. On a mobile device, it may be at the top. And I, uh -huh. am I still sharing my screen by chance? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cause, uh, Cause I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I've lost control of my own thing too. For some reason I have, it's gone to full screen mode and I can't escape out of it. I've had that problem too, but yeah. Yeah, I've uh, never had that happen. Well, let's but I'm, see I'm able to type in okay, so I think I'm, I'm fine here. Oh, there's a NASDAQ, huh? <laughs> <laughs> <How'd that happen? laughs> uh, boy, this is... Oh, and there's other things popping up on my screen that everybody can see. There's my email, okay. There's that. Let me see if I can get back into Zoom, you know, Zoom is not behaving properly for me here. And if I hit escape, it's not uh, escaping for me. And I get sounds going here and there. Is your chat window open? Maybe you have to close that. Open it. Well, I don't see a chat window. Oh, I see. I do. But, but you see, the problem is now, I can't even see, if I'm, share, if I'm still sharing my screen, I can't see how to unshare it. Okay, there I'm moving, moving people's names down. And there's my calendar. I can see all kinds of things, but uh, I can't control Zoom. Bizarre. I'm, you know, I may have to bail out of Zoom and then restart. It could be that Zoom, ha Zoom has hung on me for some somehow and, and uh, not allowed me to find things. So uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do an experiment with Zoom. I'm going to I'm going to quit Zoom and see if uh, see if I can join back. See if you guys stay connected and see if I can join back in. Okay. If not, I'm going to have to ask you guys all to come back in later if you get disconnected. Okay. If you get disconnected, okay. wait a second and then come back in. Okay, uh, let's see, I have choices. Hey, hey, how about that? 
I can end the meeting for all or I can leave the meeting. So let me just leave the meeting and I will give feedback to Zoom later. Yeah. So are the bird sounds coming from you, Carl? Could be. I hear some birds here. So yeah, that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed that when you mentioned that. Yeah, it looks like everybody else is inside, as far as I can see. So maybe, yeah, unless you have birds in your house. <laughs> Our cats would make sure we don't have any of those. Ah, we have cats yeah. here too, but mm -hmm. birds uh, keep their distance. <laughs> Smart birds. I kind of thought we'd all be disconnected when um, Alan left. Yeah, him. yeah, because usually you get a message the host has ended this meeting, but I guess mm -hmm. Alan chose a an option. Okay, so hey. I'm back in. Hey. I'm back. Okay. Now I I I don't know what happened there, but uh, I'm going to open my chat and. Uh, type in a message in the chat. Uh, this is what I'd like you, everybody to do if you can find your chat and put your name in just to check to make sure that it's working. Okay, so if you see my name in there, um, if you would please put your name in. And this is just like taking attendance for our workshop. Okay. Yes. Good, it's working. It's working for most people. Um, oh, you know, and I see an indicator that it's still recording. So it recorded all of that messy stuff that I just did. Um, <laughs> including okay. all the horrible things we said about you while we were watching. <laughs> oh no, you'll hear I, that later. Yeah. I will, yeah, I will look forward <laughs> to that later. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen again and see if I, hopefully it doesn't mess me up again. Maybe I should just share, um, maybe I have too many programs running. That could be a problem. Maybe it got confused. But let me just share the desktop again and see if that works. And what I might do is just not go to full screen when I, when I uh, if, if you guys can see my, uh, let's see, let me get my PowerPoint up again. If, if you can see that without me going to full screen, then this might be a safer way to go. Like as long as we sort of stretch that window. Chat. Can I stretch the window? Um, I can close this. I can, I can see okay though, it's not necessary. I can close mm -hmm. that and I can close this. And that's okay. Yeah, I used pretty big text. Um, so this, resuming where I left off, you, you'll need to have a text editor open if you can. You know, on an iPad, I assume that would be maybe a notepad or something. Uh, okay. And uh, that, so you can switch back and forth. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I just closed the thing that would allow me to, to uh, move to the next slide, didn't I? <laughs> uh, arrow keys do? Uh, no, that just moves it sideways. Hmm. You know, this is not, actually, this is not PowerPoint. Um, it is uh, an open, this is open, uh, open office, actually, or Neo Office. Oh, Libre, Libre and Press. Was it page there, maybe? title bar has a PPT extension on it. The title bar? Yeah, it is, it is, uh, it it's is PowerPoint extension. document, but not running in PowerPoint. Yeah. Well, let's see. There should be a way to uh, advance the slide. Here, slideshow. Start from first slide. Da 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 da. No, nope, that's not it. Hey, space Maybe bar. Yeah, we'll have to go to a full screen. Start from first slide. Okay. Oh, I know what I have to do. I have to view the um outline there it is no <laughs> that's not it. Well, you that's not click it down. i have to go back to normal there's a yeah where's that side pane there it is side pane 
So now I can go to whatever slide I want. There we go. It allows me to move. Okay, ready for the next slide. Sorry about this, guys. Here's the rules of the game, okay? There's three simple rules, okay? You're going to, the teacher is going to teach three words to the students and the teaching words, the words should never be spoken out loud, okay? This rule, these are the starting rules of this game. We're gonna run through it maybe a couple times. Um, there will be no questions or answers allowed and the instructor, the teacher, will not be able to see what the students have written until what we call the final exam. Okay, so um, I'm going to, so if you have those rules, uh, we need, we have to determine now um, who is going to uh, be the teacher. Okay, is anybody, uh, does anybody have a uh, daring soul uh, would like to be the teacher? I'm gonna stop my share. I need to see how this works first here. Yeah. Let's see. John. Which will, one? Will you be the teacher? John Erickson. Uh, I can try. I don't know how it works, but. Okay, well here, I'm, I, uh, I stopped the sharing. I believe I stopped mm -hmm. sharing. And what I'm gonna do is send you in the, I'm gonna send you three words in the um, chat, but I'm just gonna send it to you so nobody else can see the words, okay? So I will do that now. Uh, let's see, hold on a second. I just wanna send it to you. Nobody else can see those words. And uh, you, without saying the words out loud, are going to try to teach us what those words are, okay? And as John attempts to do this as the teacher, everybody else, you in your chat, or actually on your text editor, where whatever you have to text things on, if you have to use the chat, you can, for, you know, all the way through, and write down those three words as you realize what they are, okay? Is that clear? Yes. Uh, I guess so. Okay. John, you want to give it a shot? All right. You cannot, uh, nobody can say those words, okay? And other rules are no questions and answers, and there was a third rule that I can't remember. Yeah, okay, let me put up the rules. I'll share my screen again and put up the rules. Okay, so those are the rules. Oh. I guess I have one question. Oh, if, but I'm showing, I'm, actually, I'm showing the words, okay. Oh, oops. I don't see the words. <laughs> All right. I don't think anyone <laughs> saw them. I, I will start then. Um, first word is a popular fruit often used in pies, very American. A technology company has used it as its name. The second word is a technology for transmitting uh, visual and audio information used less frequently now since people are doing stuff over the internet, but it's fairly equivalent. Um, but the older versions either had an antenna or a cable. The third word is an art form um, that one listens to. And there are lots of styles going back to the beginning of human history and maybe before. And as there are no questions, everyone must have them. Okay. So um, that was pretty quick. And uh, do you think we're ready for the final exam where everybody puts their words into the chat? Um, I think so. Okay. Well, let's do it then. Everybody put what you think those words are in the chat. 
Well, this is interesting. We, we've heard from four. Ooh. <laughs> well, this is this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Andy says he he, he saw the uh <laughs> he saw them all. Yeah. We trust you. Yeah. Um Okay, well, uh, John, thank you for that. Um, and it looks like the results are, uh, you know, we won't go and we won't penalize anybody for having uh, incorrect answers. In fact, we don't even, well, we do care what the correct answers are, but we do see that there's a variety of them. So let me share my screen again and we'll go back to, um, go back to the next slide can here and uh, and do a little analyzing here okay so again keeping your access to your uh, text editor um, what difficulties did you have as an instructor and what difficulties did you have as a student with this with you know with this teaching experience and this learning experience so if you if you could put your thoughts in a text editor, and there you're reminded of the rules there again in green. Um, you can type as you text in, in your text editor, but we can also share aloud, and then eventually copy your thoughts into the into the uh, chat. Actually, so then we'll have a record of this workshop. Um, you know, see what see what everybody said. What uh, what. Well, John, starting out, well, well, I'll let everybody write for a little while. We'll just, we'll just be quiet for a second. I guess I'll, I'll say something that I was, uh, as the overall facilitator of the workshop, for a few, few moments, I was not paying attention to John. <laughs> and so all I got was Apple. <laughs> and that's one kind of student. John, how did you, what, what, what did you have, uh, uh, what was your experience as an instructor? Um, I haven't finished typing it, but it seemed easy. Um, but then looking at the answers, I see I succeeded in a lot of cases. Um, there was one person who had divergent thinking and my idea that I had successfully narrowed down the word apple to apple was not correct because blackberry fit. Mm. Um, I like blackberry pies. <laughs> I don't know if that person was trying to find more than one answer uh, just to make the point, but it was a good one. Um, with the last one, music, I started with an art form which may have put a preconception into all of the students' heads. And I said quickly that you listen to, but if there was an internet glitch or someone coughed or something, just saying that once um, slipped by. So we got paintings instead of music. To me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And how about uh, those of us, anybody as a student, what was your experience in with this learning experience? I'll say I was hanging on every word. So you were attentive student. Definitely, more than I probably would have been otherwise without um, <laughs> these rules. And the final exam. <laughs> Yeah, not being able to ask to have something repeated is a little frustrating. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that would have helped. Mm -hmm. I thought John was a great student um, and a great teacher, actually. He's, he uh, explained things clearly, but, but also Excellent. clearly um, there, were, there were flaws, uh, you know, things overlooked. And, okay, well, uh, how about, you know, if you have, if you have written down any of the, any of your thoughts to share, go ahead and go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, I see, I see a lot of people have already put theirs in the chat. If you haven't already, go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, and then I'm going to share my screen again. So you have to switch out between screen share in order to be able to see the chat, unfortunately. That's, uh, that's my homework is to figure out how to make uh, this Zoom platform work better for me as a facilitator. Um, but let's go on to a, a, another, yet another round of this same game. Okay, so we're gonna have the same game. And, uh, but this one has different rules. Actually, only one rule is different. Uh, the first rule is the same. Teaching words can never be spoken out loud. Second rule is that you may ask questions via the private chat with the teacher. Okay. And, uh, but <laughs> have to have the proviso. You can't just say, was the word apple. Okay. No outright guessing of the word. Uh, and then, but the third rule is still the same. The instructor will not be able to see what the students have written until the final exam. Okay, can somebody else, uh, now that you know what the, is involved in it, would somebody else volunteer? I'll take a shot if nobody else wants to. Okay, thank you, Carrie. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm gonna do now is, is uh, copy the three words. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop, let's see. I did stop sharing, didn't I? Okay. Yes. Okay. You see your video, or at least I do. Yeah, yeah, my, you can see. Um, so now let me find those words again. And this is round two words. If we have time, we'll go to a round three as well. Okay, so Carrie, I'm gonna send you uh, those words by a private chat. If somebody asks me a question in private chat, do I need to respond in private chat or can I respond aloud? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think for the intent of this, the intent that I had in the game, you should respond in the private chat, but, okay. um, but that's a good, you know, that's an option. In doing this kind of workshop, we can make up the rules kind of as we go, but we have to stick by the rules that we have. So, mm. I would say, are you comfortable with just doing it as a private? I will do my best. I'm not a great multitasker, so I'd like to stop In some ways, when actually, I tell you what, I'll give you a break on this. Okay. As long as you don't answer, as long as you don't repeat their question, mm, okay. you, you can give an answer, you know, you can give an answer. You just can't say, oh, so-and-so asked such and such. Mm, okay, got it. Okay. I can live with that. All right. Okay, so I just sent you some words. Got them. Okay. And you need to see the rules again? Let me, let me put up the rules. Uh, but let me make sure I don't have those words. <laughs> let me make sure Andy doesn't see the words again. <laughs> okay, here we go. Stopping the share. Did I stop? No. Oh, I'm sharing. I, I, I'm getting confused here. Now I'm sharing. Okay, so those are the rules. Are you ready, Carrie? Okay, are we good? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Uh, word number one is a flying animal. It mimics other animals of its type. Um, it is found in a book title that features a um, lawyer fighting for the underdog, I would say. And word number two 
Excuse me, Carrie. Oh, yes. Yeah, I can barely hear oh. you. I didn't quite understand the word number one, but maybe. Okay. Is it, can you hear me better now? Do I need to talk a little louder? Yeah, uh, if, you do, if you can get close to the microphone, maybe. I had a headset on and uh, microphone is probably not too great. Is that Perfect. better? That's yeah, way better. better. Thanks. Okay, sure. Then I will try to come up with what I said the first time, but um, word number one, it's a flying animal. It mimics other animals of its type. It's um, known for that. It is found in a famous book title about a lawyer uh, set in the South. Um, and this lawyer fights for the underdog. Uh, word number two, is a type of seat. You tend to see these around picnic tables, um, often in bus shelters. And word number three is something that typically only women carry. They often have um, I would call supersized versions of these so that they can carry most of their life around in them. It's uh, typically something that hangs off a shoulder strap. Um, and it is the seven letter version of the word, not the more common five letter version. And I don't want to make it too obvious by saying the five letter version. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing any questions via private chat, so we might be ready for the final exam. Okay, I'm gonna un uh, I'm gonna unshare if I can here. I'm getting better at this Zoom thing, so I unshare, <laughs> and people can type in their answers. Oh, uh, John, you sent your answer to me privately. So you might want to resend to the whole group. Ah. <laughs> If I, I'm finding it interesting that there was a one the you know the first word there were some some questions but people didn't ask questions about it. Yeah. Yeah, it was obvious that in the South, um, you know that uh, obviously killing a mockingbird, but oh yeah, the mockingbird, of course, flying. Who put down a flying squirrel? <laughs> I can't imagine. Oh, yeah. What kind of what kind of person would think of that? Well, that was that must have been uh, Rocky. Uh... Yeah, I was thinking Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Sorry. A well-known Southern animal bird. <laughs> Satchel does fit for word number three. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't come that, through, Carl. Say it again. Uh, that probably is spelled right. Is that spelled correctly? Satchel? It is. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. I lucked out. Yeah. Well, we don't we don't reduce we don't take points off for misspelling, but we do take <laughs> points off for the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must be Mockingbird then. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, we didn't when we were. When we uh, were going through John's round, John, I didn't ask John what the correct answers were. Um, so uh, we're past that, but Carrie, what were the correct answers? Uh, mockingbird, bench, and handbag. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well, let's see, am I sharing? No, I'm not. Let me share again. And we'll go into an, a little analysis of this round, which essentially is the same as before, except, um, let's see, those were the round one. Wait a minute, what am I, where am I going here? So here's a, the round one rules and the round two rules repeated. What did, was there any effect of changing the rules on the uh, interaction between students and instructor? Did we think no, no, I didn't get any messages or any questions via private chat. Yeah. So what that said, that's, you know, in any experiment, the result is what the result is, okay? This is not what I expected, but um, it may tell me more about the structure of this game than anything else. Because what I would have, go ahead. I wanted to send a question, but I couldn't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of in that position too. Satchel just didn't seem kind of far-fetched, but then I thought, well, how would I ask, you know, so I, I couldn't form a question. Mm. Ah. But, uh, yeah. So it's like, could, you know, so what, as you think about it now, what kind of, can you think of a question now that you would have liked to have asked? <laughs> what letter does it begin with? That would have helped <laughs> me. <laughs> that we may have to make a rule against that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure if it was okay for Carrie to say how many letters. But that helped a lot. Thank you. Mm, oh. Sure. Yeah. Because mm. yeah. uh, probably a lot of us crossed out purse and put handbag. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Okay. I was thinking pocketbook until I ah. counted a couple times. Oh yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, I would have thought handbook was two words actually, but. Hmm. I'm writing them out of letters, so I, I would have mm -hmm. gone for it if I had thought of it. Yeah. Yeah, I almost said it was a compound word, but uh, I thought that might be a little too gram grammar geeky. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Um, well, if you if anybody has a mind to and wants to jot down their um, thoughts about this and uh, type it into the chat, feel free to do so. Um, I my own thoughts are that I might want to change the rule or change the words or somehow tweak the, the game um, in such a way to make it easier to ask questions. I, you know, mm. using the chat, um, you know, was the idea I had, you know, in the, the way this game was originally done, there was no such thing as chat. Um, so this is a whole new, new way of doing it. Uh, and in fact, uh, let me go, let's, let's, let's proceed to another round. Um, I think we have time for another round. Let me show you what the rules for the third round are. Uh, uh, before I show you those rules, does anybody want to volunteer for that? I got to say, I'm having a hard time with visuals here. I hear everybody okay, but my, my uh, viewing's gone away, so I'm going to have to kind of play with some things here. Okay. So, okay. I lose everybody uh, later. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me sh let me oh. let me show the ru the rules for round three. We still have the same rule number one that the teaching words are never yeah. spoken aloud. Okay. I I I, I would consider <laughs> in future uh, iterations of this to not allow the number of letters in the word. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um. That's all, it's just a question of, do we want to make it harder or easier? You know, that's, that's, a, that's a tricky thing in, the, in setting up this game. But now students may ask questions aloud or via a public chat. In other words, you're not limited to uh, just a private chat. So you can, everybody can set your, your chat back to public. And you, mm -hmm. but you can also ask aloud. Um, and the instructor can ask students to send their guesses via a private chat before the final exam, okay? So this is, uh, um, you know, you can get a sense before the final exam. Will he be able to modify anything? I mean, 
Yeah, you can modify anything then, before, before the final exam. The sky's, is, the sky's the limit. A, a, as long as it conforms to these rules. Oh. Is the teacher able, what is the teacher able to um, respond to the question? The teacher can respond to the questions. I mean. But not using the word. Okay. You, you can never speak the word aloud no matter what. That's, that's an ironclad rule. <laughs> <laughs> not until after the final exam. So the instructor may uh, ask the students to send their guesses by private chat and then he can. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I, I guess I didn't make that clear. Or maybe I didn't write it down clearly. The student can't just flat out send a guess. You can't say, is, is this, well, it's similar to the rule uh, before, actually, that you can't just say, is the word apple. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, that, that, you know, question okay. cannot be that kind of question. All right. Um, so let's see who, who could. But isn't that kind of the definition of sending your guesses? Well, the guesses have to be sent privately. Oh, oh wait, yeah, you're right, let's see. Um, okay, here's the thing, I guess, you know, I have to think through these rules, but if you send your guess, the um, instructor should not, should, should just alter what they have to say, but they, you know, they can't, they can't just respond that that's the wrong, that they can't say that word and say that it's the wrong word or they can't say that it's the right word. But it's information, if you send your guess, it's information for the instructor. That's the intent of this. So that gives the instructor a chance to modify their descriptions. Of the exactly. Yeah. That's the intent of that third rule. Okay, so, so in other words, if you send your guess to the, to the instructor, that's essentially like the instructor having um, access to asking you, you know, what do you think the word is? Uh-oh, what did I just, I erased something. Damn, how did that happen? <laughs> I gotta stop my share and uh, do a, hey, that's totally bizarre. I, uh, I deleted, I was able to delete out of your PowerPoint. Rule B when I was sharing my screen. And uh, it won't come back. <laughs> <laughs> but what I can do is quit without saving and then open it again. So, but is there anybody who is willing to uh, take a shot at this? Okay, I'll give it a try, I guess. Okay, Carl. Um, I'm going to send you the words. Let's see. Let me copy those. And then okay. Uh, this is standby. I have to send it to uh, Carl. Sending Carl the words now. And uh, Carl, did you get it? Ah. Okay, and I'm going to now fix that PowerPoint or the uh, slides and then project those again so that you have them. Uh, Alan, as Carl is doing that, um, it's uh, about 6.30 here um, in Central Time, and I need to leave in about two minutes. Uh, I, I just wanted to say this has been a lot of fun. I think this is um, really creative and a different type of workshop. I don't know how effective it would be, however, uh, with a really large group. I think that the response time uh, might be really slow. <clears throat> 
Uh, I think the, I, I've, had a, I've had a lot of fun, so thanks for doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Um, we're gonna, well, we will go till about 4.30 uh, Pacific time. So Is there an ideal time. size that you have in mind for this, Alan? Um, there's a, actually in the original version of this game, people worked in groups of three all in the same room. People were, you know, present live in the same room. People worked in groups of, uh, I think four actually. And one per person played the role of the teacher and the other three were students. I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about how it was done originally, but after, after we're done with round three, okay. Um, Cause then we'll just finish up and I'll explain what the history of this was and what the significance is actually we, you know, we need to, but anyway, um, Carl, you want to give a shot at. Sure. Yeah. Um, word one is a, an object or you, uh, that you would use to sit down. Um, not necessarily just at a table, but it could be, um, anywhere. Uh, the second word is the beginning or an end point to something uh, often used in electrical um, descriptions. Uh, the third word is all, also often used for electrical uh, things um, and it is to change the um, um, to, to, to make make a change from one thing to another. Anybody like to send me their guesses? <laughs> I think this will be very helpful. <laughs> There's a request for guesses, yeah. We can ask aloud. You can, you, but you can't say what your guess is. Uh, I, I mean, a question like say more about oh, number two, a good question or? Yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> I, I would think so. What was it again? Say, right. more, say more about number two. Number two, um, uh, it's uh, like a beginning point or an end point. All right. Of um, just about anything. They're often used in, in electrical terminology. Um, sometimes though for um, Oh, Carl, you, did you drop out? I think Carl may have dropped out. Uh-oh. You know, that's a... Uh, yeah, no, um, the, first, the first word, um, it's kind of a tough one because there are many uh, device. Uh, this one, um, this one could be um, something like you say around a table or it could be somewhere where uh, someone could uh, uh, recline more as well. Can you describe word number three again? Ah, to change, um, it's often used in, in electrical um, technology, change the, um, the state of, a, of an object. The first word also, it's, it's generally used for just about a lot of things. I don't know, that's a tough one to... to yeah, it could be that these words are particularly harder than the previous words, I don't know. It's the, does the first word, um, the first word something that has legs? Uh, it might or might not. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is it a very common word or sort of yeah. specialized? Very common. Right. No, and that's, I think the problem is it's not very specialized at all. Uh, 
So uh, back to the first word. You had said originally it helps you to sit down. I thought. Uh, no, it's the object upon which okay. you might sit down. Okay. Thank you. And um, the words two and three, um, would they have been in use prior to electricity? Yes. Yes. And um, maybe how would they just commonly use there, but you know, that's the first thing came to my mind. So how might someone from the 18th century have described these words? Um, the second word they probably would have used more for um, uh, transportation. Hmm. The beginning point and end point. Oh, okay. um, the second one they might use as, uh, as to alternate, as a verb, to alternate. Which word did you just describe there? The, uh, the second and the third. The second word was the one I described as being a, uh, an end point um, for um, transportation. The second one was a um, verb to, to alternate something or to alter something. The third one is. That's the third one, yes. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to have to wrap this uh, particular yeah, round. I see a lot up. of guesses are getting close, but um, are you getting uh, are you getting a lot of uh, guesses through the through your? Yeah, I am. Uh huh. Is it getting? Is it uh, narrowing down? Is there? Improvement? Yeah, that's helped quite, uh, substantially. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's stop this round because uh, we're you know we're approaching the hour. We have about. Well, we don't have a hard ending point for this workshop, but I'd like to not stretch it out too much. And in fact, one of the things that we used to do was put a three minute limit on any, any one particular round. So let's go ahead. Um, and uh, Carl, well, let me go to the next slide, um, which is again, an analysis of uh, you know, what, what effect did these things have? Uh, now that we've had uh, the third round rules. Um, That's a question to me. It's a question to everybody as a stu <laughs> the students as students and you as the instructor. Well, it sure helped me to, you know, be able to um, elaborate on some of these. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know how much of a benefit it was with some yeah. of these. One thing as I think the words you had may have been harder than uh, than previous words. What were the words? Uh, Can we tell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, was, we, we didn't have the final exam, but uh, why don't you just say mm. what the words were? Did, did everybody um, put their, uh, their things in here? Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of people got um, some of them, but I don't see anybody that got all of them. It was seat, uh. seat terminal, and switch. Hmm. Yeah, I think those were hard. Those those were this in 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 composing this game. It really what this tells me is that the choice of the words actually is uh, important. Another thing that this told me is that. Um, it, when you do introduce interaction, more interaction and the ability for questions and answers, it stretches out, it takes longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was a lot more thoughtful with these harder ones. I thought mm -hmm. it was appropriate when there was, I had things to ask about. Yeah. I could have asked more, but wanted to hear what other people might ask. Mm. I liked Andy's question about how would somebody from the 18th century yeah. <laughs> to use the words that. Yeah, that I like that one too. Interesting, yeah. I was Good thinking of, of electrical and of course that's, yeah. Yeah, I think that if uh, for number one, um, if uh, the number of uh, letters 
was said rather than you know, uh -huh. Peter Chair. So maybe if if uh, it was said that there were only four letters, then instead of five. Oh yeah, the, well that's a rule. Yeah, yeah or was, when we play the game, that would be a, a you know whether yeah, or not right. that's a rule. Yeah, mm. it's just curious that the seat and chair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Actually, let me let me uh, show you what's what the game was like before. Um. Whoops, what happened? Um. Let's see, let me go back to, that was around three, oh, something got switched around here. In the original formulation of the game, like I said, th this is kind of how it was set up. Can I, am I still sharing my screen? Yes. Okay, uh, the, you know, the facilitator would put a picture up on the wall and everybody was facing away from the picture. Nobody could see the picture and the people who were, the instructors were facing the picture. The instructors could not see the student's paper and they, the, the goal of the game was for them to draw that picture. Um, the students, you know, that was the end result for the students. Um, and so there were very, very variations where the um, instructor or the teacher could, could not see it and they couldn't ask questions. Um, you know, the most restrictive thing, which is essentially like a lecture you know, which is basically what John did at the beginning. Um, and then removing the barriers where they allow the instructor to see what they were doing. Um, and then there was also, they could ask questions in one round if, if they wanted to, if there was time. So uh, this was, for example, the picture that was used in round two. Um, and those were the one of the, the first rule in this original game was that they could use no gestures, okay? <clears throat> the idea there being that uh, in a planetarium, if you're a live presenter, people probably can't see you, okay? So that's, that simulates that. And, and in fact, how does all of this relate to planetarium shows? How does your ability to understand what is being communicated change when you have these restrictions. Okay, or when the restrictions are removed. And what instructional strategies become possible as more interaction is permitted? Yeah, I guess the assumptions you make about whether you're clear or not uh, don't always hold up when they're restrictions yeah well I was going to point out that um, not only um, can't you be seen but you can't see puzzled looks on the audience's faces uh -huh. if they're in the yeah dark. exactly so in, in a way this online version is uh, very similar to a planetarium where you can't really see <laughs> what's going on In, in that regard. Oh, oh, there's a puzzle book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John, we got puzzle books. <laughs> John um, I'm going to have to uh, to leave. So um, um, this was this was really fun, Alan. It was great. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. See you all later. Yeah. Well, uh, we probably should wrap it up anyway. The, the I have some closing thoughts here. Um, and that is that this is, this is a uh, module one of a, of a, well, actually, wait a minute. First, let me show this one. It's good to use analogies, but you have to be careful. Okay. You know, analogies are very good, but if you, if you say a wave as an analogy or what you think people will see as a wave, somebody might see this kind of wave and uh, somebody else might see that wave. Okay, so I think that's what was happening in some of our rounds is when you're describing something and you're thinking of something that you're describing, other people are imagining something else. So that was one of the things that, that I think actually came out in this game. Um, 
what the instructor thinks they're saying is not necessarily what the people are hearing. Um, and for the uh, other parts of this workshop, um, let me just skip down here. The next module is about a framework for examining planetarium shows. And uh, in this mm. planetarium educators workshop guide, these are all nine modules. So what I was thinking is that we could take uh, each of the modules and spend an hour on it and see how that works, similar to what we did here. Although um, it may be easier for some of these to, to um, like, I, I thought it was very challenging to try to recreate this game uh, of communication in an online setting. I think some other things might be easier to do in an online setting. Um, but I'm actually very interested in feedback right at this point of, do people like this and should we continue uh, a planetarium educators workshop? Uh, more modules. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I think it'd be valuable to do more. Am I still on? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think as long as um, they can be successfully converted to online and, you know, I mean, we, we ran into a few bumps, but they were all um, um, opportunities to, to learn and um, yeah, the, it's, it stood up. Yeah, actually, I appreciate the opportunity to learn from you guys because what occurred to me is that I could repeat this module um, you know, have it available at uh, some other, you know, one or two other times so that people weren't, who are not available at this time could, could try it out. But I could also use what I learned in this session probably to improve how it goes um, for the next time that uh, we run this particular module. Any other comments? I would come back for more, <laughs> even though I've read the book too. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, John, I would come to you and ask if you wanted to be a help uh, co presenter on some of these. Uh, I mean, Alan? Uh, yeah. Uh, just curious, though, that uh, I know um, all these were taken from your past uh, booklet, <clears throat> but uh, years and years ago, uh, maps also produced something very similar called under roof sky. Yeah, roof dome and sky. Yeah, uh, roof dome and sky, right? And that was um, uh, that was also filled with similar interactive activities for the planetarium. Uh, have you considered uh, taking a look at that again and maybe merging these two? Um, um, well. It it actually, I'm not, I'm not sure about merging them, but I think it would be really valuable to incorporate them in, a, in, a, in its own kind of workshop. Because I think Under Roof, Dome, and Sky was, was a collection of planetarium activities. Right, right. So, you know, things that, you, you know, that were kind of patterned and ready to go. Kind of like our other, like this, these are workshops for the theory of how to do audience participation programs. And um, some of the other past series things were actual programs or actual activities that you could just pick up and use once you understood the theory of it and had practice doing it. So I think Under Roof, Goldman Sky is in, in that category and it would be great to get, I think that's a great suggestion. <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to uh, dig mine out. My, I, I have that somewhere. Um, and take yeah. a look at that. But, uh, that that's, yeah, this is this has been really really um, refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I thought it might be of value to dust off the things from the 1980s because they, these the principles of them don't change. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, I can't see. On my screen, am I still share? Am I sharing? Yes. Yes. Okay. How do I unshare? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me. Uh, actually, I think I see how to unshare um, because I don't see how to stop the recording. Uh, now we see you. 
there it is. Okay. And I see a stop recording. All right. I'm back in control. And I want to <laughs> thank everybody from, for coming today. Is there, you know, if there's any other comments or things, you know, feel free to, feel free to comment. Also feel free to send me an email. I think um, after the last comment, we should uphold the tradition of unmuting and a little applause too. Oh, <laughs> thank you, John. Okay, we got all that in the recording. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> okay, well, and thanks again for coming today. I think we're gonna sign off now. I'll stop the recording. And, um, and uh, we'll see you next month. Ready?